You're watching a classic episode of Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World Television. Catching a fish on every cast doesn't happen often, but when it does, there's no angling excitement to match it. Champion bass angler Kevin Van Dam and nephew Stephen Gould found such a bass bonanza on Kentucky Lake, where a seemingly endless school of largemouths did their best to wear out the anglers. Kentucky Lake in western Kentucky and Tennessee stretches for more than 180 miles, offering 160,000 acres of prime fishing water. But knowing where to start in that much water can be a challenge. Lots of experience and some local contacts have helped put Kevin on a likely area. They've located fish on a shallow bar surrounded by feeder creeks off the main river channel. The anglers are fishing both sinking and topwater lures, working them fast so they dart and flash at the surface. And when a bass connects, it's a real jolt. <laughs> they love to jump. Oh, that's a good one right there. He just killed it too. That's one thing I love about throwing diamond shads is when they get on it, they get on it. One of the things about these kind of baits is you have to get those bass to react to it. This water's a little bit stained, so you want to reel it pretty quick, and if you hit, a, uh, hit any of that grass, just kind of rip it, and they'll bite it right on that little pause. There it is, right there. Throw right there, Steve. You see what I did? I dropped the rod tip there after getting my bait fouled, and he just unloaded on it. They're schooled right there. Drop, rip it up and let it flutter a little bit. Look at that, see he just, I hooked him in the top of the head. He didn't try to, to eat it, he just tried to kill it. And they'll do that a lot when they're feeding on shad. <laughs> Easy. This isn't the Bassmasters Classic, Steve. <laughs> Taught him well. Be careful now. I'm not a good surgeon, but I can get them hooks out. You got the plans. Here, let me get him for you, because you want to get right back out there. It's early in the morning like this. We're fishing on top of a bar, throwing a diamond shed. Those bass are schooling out there. You want to get out back in there and when you get a bite like that it'll excite the whole rest of that school Steve and you want to just get that bait right in there so anytime I hook one or you hook one we need to catch right on top of that exact spot yeah. it's just a long ridge here it's about three or four hundred yards long and it drops off on the other side kind of into these little ditches and goes all the way out to the channel and on these river lakes that's what happens is, you know, you got him? Yep, there we go. You just get these uh, little ridges that are formed from the current, and the bass move up on the, on the tops of them when the current's going over them, and this one has a little bit of scrubby grass on a little bottom grass, and uh, it's just about three foot on top, and it tapers off to five on the sides, and it just runs out there and just kind of dissipates, and they usually get up on the shallowest part of it, those of you that don't know, Steve's my nephew, and uh, he's kind of grown up around bass fishing with all the tournament fishing and stuff that I've done. See who's is bigger, though, Steve. <laughs> he, uh, he and my other nephews and my cousins, they, uh, they kind of live and breathe it. We got a pond in our backyard. The most educated bass in the country live in my pond. They're always, I mean, they're up on the latest techniques. They got all the hottest lures. They come up to my tackle room, get all the, the great stuff. I can tell you, if you can come to my pond and catch them, you're a darn good bass fisherman. Kevin's gear today includes six and a half foot Quantum Tour Edition PT Series rods, Quantum E600 PT Tour Edition reels, Strike King Diamond Shads and Spittin' Kings, Lucky Crap Sammies, and 14 pound XPS mono from Bass Pro Shops. There he is. Yeah, you got him right there. I seen him follow it and get it. Good one too, Steve. 
See that? He ripped it out of that grass and he chased it down. The Big Lake goes through a winter drawdown of about five feet each year. During that time, biologists with the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Resources Department plant grasses along shorelines, set stake beds to benefit spawn survival, and perform other management efforts to improve fish populations. Apparently, the program is working. In combination with the fertility of the lake and a steady flow of well-oxygenated water, fishing remains good almost year-round. Oh, they come busting. There, see, go, oh, keep real, just keep working it, keep working it. Another one up top. Get him, got him. Got him. Good ones too, these are all good ones here. Mine's not. Oh, that one that blasted it the first time was a good one. Get him off and get back out there. They were really just tearing it up. You got one? Got oh man, did he just eat it right there. That looks like a good one. That's a good one there, Jim. <laughs> Steve, they're thick out there, buddy. You got them pliers? I mean, this one just well, straight off the back of the boat, not far. Steve, are you excited? Yeah. I can't believe how aggressive they are. Oh, get him, good fish. You got him? Nope. Oh. Man, they're biting like crazy. Boy, usually you keep working it like that. Biologists say that all the water in the lake passes through every 30 days, keeping the water quality in great shape and the bass spoiling for a fight. Go ahead, Steve. Just start working it. Start working your bait now. Right here? I've seen more of them come up there with it. Bright sun and everything like that, but it doesn't matter. These fish are in here to feed on shad. There's a lot of grass out here, and there's current blowing over this big flat. And uh, that's all they're doing is sitting there waiting in that current for balls of shad to come drifting through here. And that top water is almost one of the best baits to throw because the grass is so thick, it's hard to make anything else uh, work through there good. And they're keying on shad, they're here to feed. So even with the bright sunshine, all I do is move it just a little faster. The brighter it is, the clearer the water, the faster you want to move your top water. The dirtier it is, I want something that makes more noise and it's a little slower, but uh, right here, you want something that kind of skips along. They seem to bite this uh, spitting king as good as they do the stick bait, so. That one knocked the rod out of my hand. I mean, I'll promise you there's more there the way that one bit. These bass are probably two to three years old, and they're fat and full of energy. <laughs> The quick release means they'll survive to become even larger next year. It's a day that young Steve probably won't forget for a long time, and neither will his uncle. Whether you're competing in a national championship or just fishing for fun, this kind of action is what bassing is all about.